When I say the name Paul George, be honest, what's the first word that comes to mind? Way off, it's the side of the backboard. We're all guilty of it. Recency bias, prisoner of the moment, echo chambers, things that are all prevalent on social media in the year 2021. If you so much as try and compliment the man, this is usually what ensues in the comment section. But if we're gonna get our jokes off on Paul George at his low points, we have to be willing to give respect when the tables turn. PG-13 is having a career season. After single-handedly leading the Clippers to a comeback victory in Portland, he was not only averaging 23.8 points per game on 48-43-89 shooting splits, but career highs in assists per game and a true shooting percentage, which is a number 2% higher than his previous best season. Now I could throw numbers at you all day, and let's be honest, they don't matter to 99 out of 100 people walking down the street. Why is that? Well, first and foremost, after what went down against Damian Lillard in that playoff series, and then in the bubble, blowing the 3-1 lead to the Nuggets, Fans of the NBA just aren't going to care what this man does in the regular season. Paul George isn't the first, nor is he going to be the last. The NFL had Peyton Manning before he finally hoisted the Lombardi Trophy. The NHL had the Washington Capitals, MLB, the Oakland A's. Still, hell, nobody trusted the Dallas Mavericks as far as they could throw them in the 2000s after what Baron Davis's Warriors did to them. But somebody's got to ask the question, do we unfairly expect too much from this man? The Paul George I remember took the Indiana Pacers to the brink of the NBA Finals twice against LeBron's Miami Heat. The Paul George I remember suffered one of the most devastating leg injuries ever caught on film that would keep every single one of us from walking properly again, let alone competing at a championship level. Now, he certainly doesn't help himself sometimes. We saw those Instagram comments with Dame. He made his bed and he's got to sleep in it. But you are crazy if you don't think this man is talented enough to fulfill his revenge tour destiny. To illustrate how Paul George's game has evolved and can finally translate to the postseason, I'm gonna kick it to Coach Nick from B-Ball Breakdown for the X's and O's. Thanks, Rob, and you are right. Paul George is a bad man oozing with talent. And if we're looking at how he's evolved this year, I've got two words for you, isolation. We all remember him complaining about his role in Doc's offense last year, and Ty Lue was clearly listening. He's reduced the number of times he's off ball coming off screens and replaced them with isolations. 37% of his isos end up as three pointers, and he's off the charts, making them at a 53.3% clip. And he doesn't care if he forces a switch to a smaller guard and just shoots right over the top or putting a big man through the torture chamber of a vicious crossover dribble into a dagger of a deep shot. He loves to go through his legs as the last dribble before pulling up, and I wonder if this will be something defenders will key in on in the playoffs to make it harder for him to make these. But judging by how often he's nailing them with almost no space to get them off, I'm not sure it would even matter. It's clear this was the flow PG was talking about, and it's like a river flowing through the mountains. We know the mountain that he has to climb, because he's been there before, and it's steep. But if winning titles was easy, everyone would do it. You don't have to believe in Paul George. You don't even have to like him. I just ask if he does get to the promised land, that what he accomplished this season and overcame in previous ones to get there doesn't get overlooked.